Hello and welcome to this session of the Digital Container Summit. I'm Leonardo Zangrando, founder of Startup Wharf, the independent global virtual hub of startup-driven maritime innovation, publishing the quarterly maritime startup ecosystem infographic. In this session, we're going to meet John Fath of Transmetrics. Transmetrics have been in the maritime startup ecosystem from the very beginning, and they made some giant steps. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from John today. John's presentation is about predicting the container moves, data-driven approach to empty container repositioning. After the presentation, there is going to be a Q&A session. So please do ask your questions in the panel on the side under the Q&A tab at any time. At the end of the presentation, I'm going to ask him your questions on your behalf. And before we start, I also want to remind you that John has made available three handouts that you can download at any moment from the handouts tab. Now it's time to hear directly from John. John, the, the stage is yours. Thank you, Leonardo, and hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, so today we are going to talk about our topic in our industry, which is how we can predict, you know, the empty container reposition in flow. So I'm John, as mentioned by Leonardo, CEO at Transmetrics. So who are we? We are an artificial intelligence company headquartered in Europe. And why do we do that? We are replying to two questions with our customer. We are helping them to solve two challenges. So the first one, which is linked really to asset management, which is where, when, and how should I position my logistic asset? The second one, which is more linked to the transport operations of this world, it's what is the most optimal transport planning for my day-to-day -day business? So those two questions translate in actually two products. And so we apply AI, so augmented intelligence, rather than just artificial intelligence. We, we, are, we strongly believe that you know, the planning team is at the heart of the planning process and should remain like that. You know? So we are actually bringing intelligence to the planning team. So that's why we play with the augmented and artificial intelligence world. And we also apply predictive analytics you know, to help logistics and only logistic company to optimize their daily planning operations. So we work with, uh, with all the bigger enterprises in the supply chain space, predominantly in Europe. We recently opened the border and we are now, um, you know, we are now going abroad uh, uh, in the US or in the Middle East and also some of the customers in Asia. Our largest customer right now is Queen Angle, and we have achieved multi-million optimization benefits with, uh, with our clients. Last, uh, last but not the least, um, the startup has actually uh, been awarded uh, back in December last year from the European Commission as one of the top AI companies in Europe, and we got a grant uh, for, for this award. We cover the entire supply chain. As I just said, we are unique in a way. We are only working in the supply chain space. Now, we have different competitors, but not really in this market space. So uh, in front of the screen right now, you just have like a, a representation of what can be the supply chain from, from, we all know what it is, you know, from the, from the supplier of the supplier to the end consumer. And we really cover, and we have user cases all, all across the chain. So it can start, you know, from the, from the factory to the first warehouse, Ocean shipping line, for instance, and this is where we will focus our, our effort today to understand what we are, what we do and how we do that. So empty container repositioning down to last mile resource optimization, going through warehouse activities optimization, where we can actually forecast where the SKU have to be placed in the warehouse in order to, uh, to serve the end customer, but also network and line hole optimization for, uh, between hub to hub, you know, a model, parcel, pallet group page. And last but not least, also we are working on fleet and maintenance optimization for every asset owner. And still, asset, uh, we are still only working in the supply chain space, so think about Sea container, trucks, trailer, light commercial vehicles, forklift, and even pallets. So one of the things, you know, and also before to, uh, to, uh, to really enter in the, in the solution is, I just want to mention something that are, has been made by the, the BCG group, the Boston Constituent Group. So, and this is quite alarming, to be honest. Every third container is being moved empty across the world. So that costs up to 20 billion US dollars per year to our industry. But not only, it's a lot of inefficiency you know, in terms of money, but also in, our, in terms of CO2 emissions. So this is why also we are focusing on, our, on this specific 
part of the chain. You know, we have a lot of inefficiencies uh, in, uh, in the in moving empty container. And on top of that, you know, with, uh, with what happened to us uh, this year with the COVID-19 pandemic, we clearly have been affected negatively on our PNL in terms of profitability, sorry. And we are all forced right now to make tough decisions and to cut, uh, to cut costs, you know? So we were uh, talking to one of our customers recently and uh, one of his pain points is really now to, um, to re-improve uh, its PNL cost structure. And it has been, you know, uh, it has been a lot of, of people who have been, you know, fired and so, you know, so we want to avoid that. We want to stay competitive. We want to bring, you know, a lot of, uh, of uh, productivity improvement to the company. And this is also why we are doing that. There is uh, an interesting figure from the BCG. So the repositioning cost of those empty containers represent up to 8% of the total operating cost on the PNL. And 30% of this 8% is actually caused by inefficiencies and can actually be saved with technology. So this is where we are, where we start. So, and as I just mentioned, you know, the idea is also to, uh, to save a planet at the end of the, of the day. It's not, only, it's not only a profit, it's also a planet. And those new technologies algorithm can actually help us to reduce millions of tons of CO2 emission per year. So on the, on the next slide, we'll focus more on, our, on why we have those, uh, those, uh, those challenges, you know, to actually move those empty containers. So at the top of the slide, you can see what, uh, what would happen in a perfect world. So we send a container from, from the A location. The container is actually fully loaded. We transport this container to the B location. We unload this container and we, re we reload the container with another type of goods and we come back same fully, uh, fully loaded. So that's a perfect balance uh, flow, but that doesn't happen a lot in our industry. Most of the time, and this is what you see at the, at the bottom of this slide, the, the flow is generally imbalanced. You know? So you start from an A location, you go to the B location, but you don't, you don't have anything actually to, uh, to load the container to come back. So at a certain point of the day, we have a lot of empty container across the world and you need to find a way to reposition those container first, but also where to put those container. Should I actually, you know, way to actually find a find freight, you know, to load it? Should I actually move this container to a C location, to a D location, at what cost, when, and how. And this is where Transmetric is actually uh, uh, improving the, the process. So AI. So AI means a lot and means nothing at the same time. So we are working in the specific field which is called demand forecasting. So you, uh, you all have heard about IBM Watson, for instance, back in 2011. I don't know if you remember that, but that was the first AI algorithm who actually um, compete with, uh, who did compete with, uh, with a Geopardy game, and they won. You know, no one actually believed that it was going to happen, but that was the first, you know, AI uh, model where uh, the public, the large public, were actually trying to understand what can AI bring you know, to real life. Then later, it happened like two or three years ago where Google actually built this algorithm with DeepMind AlphaGo, same with a game, but still no, no way for actually a human brain to beat uh, the machine. And this is, this is, what, it is what is interesting, you know, so you, you understand that, that in our logistic and transport world, we have a lot of constraints, a lot of challenges, and our human brain is limited. We like it or not, that's the reality of the thing, but the machine is much more powerful than us uh, at the end of the day. So the, the AI algorithm for Transmetrics is different, obviously, you know, uh, from IBM Watson or from, uh, from Google DeepMind AlphaGo. It's different because it has been fully built and specially built and trained on logistic data. So back in 2013, uh, when Transmetrics started, we, uh, we actually wanted to focus only on the supply chain space, and right now we have seven years of experience of actually crunching, cleansing, and building algorithms around logistic data. And as I said at the beginning of the presentation, in logistics, we strongly believe that it's extremely important to put the power in the end of the planner. So this is where we make you know, uh, 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 the difference. It's not artificial intelligence, it's augmented intelligence. We are bringing a tool which basically, the outcome is basically generally uh, an optimized planning for the planning team. We are bringing this tool for the planner to, uh, to make a better uh, decision. How does that work? 
So we generally interconnect, you know, our SaaS platform, which is a, a, a web web app base, you know, to a TMS system, to a transfer management system. And the first part of the process is actually to clean the data. So this is where we clean the data, we understand and transform the data. This is a crucial part of the process because this is where also we'll be able to automate, you know, the process. So after this first step, our team, and we, are, we have a team, uh, this is where we are also unique, you know, we have a mix of, uh, of PhD in mathematics, but also logistic experts. We have in our team, you know, uh, people who spend more than 10 years, you know, working really in operation, in transport operation, but you have also pure mathematician with PhD uh, background. And this is, you know, this good uh, uh, marriage, which actually bring uh, the secret source of our, mo of our model. So the, the team will actually sit down with the customer to fully understand the real life constraints of the business and transform these constraints into actually mathematical algorithms. The last step of the process, and this is where the secret sauce is playing uh, its bigger role. So we actually forecast. So for instance, in our industry, which is a maritime industry, we are able to forecast up to 12 weeks with a very high level of accuracy. So we forecast, we take all of the constraints of the business. So think about the positioning cost, maintenance cost, storage cost, grading cost, for instance. We take everything in consideration and we optimize. And when I say optimize, is basically we give the most optimal planning to the planner. At the end of the day, we send it to the planning system. And as I said earlier, still to the planning team to either take his additives or fine tune the, the planning. And it's fully interconnected with the TMS. It's a very light uh, module because we are not trying to replace the TMS or, or whatsoever. The idea in two or three months, we have the first result. It's actually plugged in on, on top of the TMS, and on a daily ba basis, we are we are communicating with the with the TMS. So in terms of benefits, you know, so obviously, you know, the highest saving that is generally you know constated with our with our customers is the reposition cost. So basically, we can actually reduce up to twenty percent of the reposition cost by actually forecasting and giving the right planning to the planner, we generally say yeah, between 50 and 20%, but yeah, in average 20%. Another thing uh, which is interesting, you know, companies have generally a lot of uh, uh, several different locations. And across those different locations, the local planning team or the local manager, and um, it's understandable, generally keep a safety stock. You know, they, they want to be able to serve the end customer, Service quality, you know, is, a, is at the top of our of our challenges. So they want to have the safety stock to serve the end customer. So they keep a, a safety stock, which is generally a bit higher than what they really need. So by actually knowing how many containers they have to uh, to, to reposition and when, they are actually able to reduce the safety stock. And generally, and that's a that's a short term saving. We can actually uh, defeat part of our, of those containers, and generally we reduce the fleet by ten percent. Last but not least, we are actually leveraging real-time data and also a maintenance cost in order to take this part of, our, of the PNL in consideration. So think about like we have a, a customer uh, who actually uh, you know a transport container between India and Qatar, but at a certain point for no reason all of the empty container arrive in uh, in Qatar. Obviously, the labor rate is much higher than in India, so the maintenance cost is becoming higher. So we, we are helping them actually to reposition the container, taking that in consideration, and we focus on actually maintaining this, uh, this container in India. So this is the type of saving we can, we can get. Obviously, it really depends on the business. I would say the more complex your business is, the better it, it will be in terms of optimization. So just a, a user case, and a, I would be happy also to, uh, to show you a demo, you know, so you, have a, you will have my email address at the end of the, of the presentation. So feel free to reach out to me in order to, uh, to deep dive into this user case, for instance, but also if you want any demo of our, of our SaaS platform. But one of our customers is a major player in the uh, ocean shipping line business, and they transport containers between the west part of Africa, the French part of Africa, and, and the rest of the world. And at a certain point, you know, all of the empty containers are arrive uh, in different locations in West Africa, and they need to reposition that. Uh, we are talking about, yes, yeah, 60,000 TUs and 30 container vessels. So we help them to, uh, to do that. And yeah, the same here, the, the biggest as achievement uh, has been for us that the central planning team is using on a daily basis this tool. 
and we were able to save up to 20% of uh, of repositioning cost. And that's a great achievement for, for, for our team because we actually proved that, you know, AI is something real. We can use AI today in our industry in order to, uh, to help uh, businesses, but also the world to be better. Thank you, Sophia. Feel free to, uh, to ask for any question. Feel free to reach out to me if, you're, if you need a demo, but I'll be there uh, for the next uh, 15 minutes with, uh, with Leonardo. Well, well, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, John. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, there's always something to learn. Um, actually, I, I was taking notes and I learned a lot. Um, so now I, I suggest everybody who's who's watching, listening, uh, to ask their questions. Uh, put them in the Q and A or in the chat. Uh, no, no problem. Actually, we have already two questions uh, from Peter. Um, so Peter is asking, uh, what data do you need to improve forecasting and efficiency? What kind of data do you need? So basically, hi, uh, Peter. Uh, thank you for your question. So the more data you have, the better it is for us. You know, we can actually map all of your constraints, but the basic data set we need is actually the booking, or the booking data. So from A to B, you know, you, you, uh, you have sent, you know, that many continents and so on. So that's really the analysis of the historical data. You know, so we generally we need between one and three years to uh, to build a, a solid algorithm. It's machine learning, so a year is generally enough, and we build on top of that, and then we will improve going forward the algorithm. But yeah, ideally between one and three years of data, all of the booking data. On top of that, we also map all of the fixed costs that you have. Think about the maintenance cost by location, um, the repositioning cost, uh, the cost also between uh, a chartered vessel but uh, uh, also a own vessel grading cost, I mean, everything that you can use and that can actually impact the decision process is actually taken in consideration. And regarding the, 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 the last part of your question, um, do you build APIs to get the data? Yeah, we have REST API, so we can also directly interconnect, you know, our web, pla web platform with, uh, with your TMS. But, you know, for, for some of our customers, we also use, you know, like just simple uh, flat file, a .csv on a daily basis works as well. We, we adapt our, our product to our, to the to the current uh, TMS, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you, Peter, for the questions. Um, I think I, I was listening to the question and I was thinking, and then I realized that I was asking myself the wrong question. When you say one to three years of data, it, it's one or three years of historic data. Not that you take three years to understand to learn. Of course, it's you learn from three years past of historic data. Yeah, yeah, we learn. Right. Yeah, that's a good question, Alina. Yeah, we we take this data, the historical data, to build the business model of the company, to understand, you know, the peak of activity, to understand which location is asking more content and so on. So this is this is the first part of the process I showed you earlier, and so this yeah. is really important to actually start to understand how the business works. Okay. Yes. And now we have another question from Raquel. Uh, so it's one is do you have statistics on the percentage of costs reduced by sharing containers so it, do you work also on sharing containers so uh, I Raquel, think for a question so uh, sharing container you mean sharing container between different uh, businesses uh, well, let, let's wait if Raquel can can answer this question but uh, Let's assume it is sharing container among different um, shipping lines. We didn't really have, have this specific case, you know. So we we are close to some asset company uh, management who are actually working on that asset sharing. So, uh, but we didn't really work on that. We can take that in consideration as well. What we do, for instance, we take the short-term rental uh, container flow. So, for instance, you know, if at a certain point you need short-term rental because you know to absorb one of the peak of activity, we take that in consideration and we we can advise to go, you know, to a, to one of the largest uh, leasing company to a, to a, to rent on spot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think right. this was like, the second part of the question. Yeah, by by better management of their own fleet, and that's true. You know what what you are also where we are also helping the company is generally to find the right basis. You know, or what is the optimal fleet I should have? 
And then, on, you know, the more spots container you have, the better it is because this is where we can actually uh, tap, you know, with, uh, with the algorithm. So, um, obviously, it's, it's more expensive. So, it's always a bi balance by actually finding the right uh, break-even point of should I own or should I rent? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. And another question from Gerard uh, Bonnell. Uh, what challenges do you find working with the dry edge uh, TMS? Uh, is there any clear opportunity for improvement that you see? So, uh, so yes. Yeah, so, uh, so we, we, the, the, the main improvement generally what, what you can do is in terms of uh, like, like the quality of the data itself. And this is what your what is actually common across the industry. The quality, I mean, you all know garbage in, garbage out, and this is actually the truth. Most of the time, you know, so we have a, we have a lot of uh, of efforts to put at the beginning of the process to really understand the quality of of the data from uh, from the TMS. So I would say, like, when you work on a TMS implement, you have a couple of customers actually working right now on the TMS implementation. This is crucial, you know, to to be sure that you have the right data and that your team actually fill out all of the different fields. Because we all say that data is gold or the new gold, and that's true. You know, so we spend a lot of time at the beginning to clean this data and to be sure that the team will actually fill out the right field in order to work with that. Data is gold if we do something with that, but we, that's actually our, our, our core business. And yeah, I can tell you that this is, a, this is a pain point at the beginning. So yeah, if, you're, if I have one advice to, uh, to you, is really make sure that you know the data that you actually capture along the process is uh, is uh, is clear and uh, and understandable also by everyone. Okay, great, thank you. And I see there is a message from Alex uh, regarding two articles from Transmetrics um, about how to optimize the empty container moves. So I I think that um, if people want to to learn more, they can also go to those articles. Uh, just click the link. Uh, maybe later when we finish. Um, so, any other questions? Um, otherwise, I have some some questions myself. But but please keep keep uh, posting your questions. We have some uh, eight minutes, seven minutes left. So uh, there is there is room for other questions. So my question um, is about uh, um, you say we innovate, uh, we make the, the 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 system more efficient, but we also save the planet. Um, and this is great. I think this is something that every company should Amazing. keep in mind. Yeah. Um, do you have any figures on this? Any like uh, what do you expect that you could you could yeah. contribute to saving the planet or like the, the small grain of, of of sand towards saving the planet? So that's a very good question, and uh, we really emphasize on that more and more. Actually, you know, because yeah, it's money at the end. You know, you are all. All earth about this three P, so people, planet, profit, and really planet. I mean, you can see that you know by actually traveling more during this COVID nineteen episode, how much CO two emission have been saved, right? It's been saved. So, uh, so we actually uh, work on a different ROI model, of course, you know, with the customer. We also transform this ROI into actually CO two earth saving. So the twenty oh, right. billion US dollars per year that we are talking about from BCG translate actually in six million CO two emission. So if you're wow. able actually, and you have 30% of this cost is actually caused by inefficiency. So we are talking about potentially 2 million CO2 emission per year that you can save as of today. So 2 million, uh, what what unit? 2 million tons of CO2. Yeah, CO2. Okay. yeah, 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 of course. Uh, wow, that's, that's absolutely great. And, and by saving money, uh, actually, not by spending it, which is great. Um, now, another question from Robert. Uh, I was trying to make make sense of it. How big a difference do you believe a data driven approach to have on minimizing repositioning empty containers? So, so I think that the question is, um, what's the impact of a data driven approach to on on repositioning of empty containers? Hey, Robert. Yes. Yeah, so, thank you for the question. So, uh, um, if I if I understand correctly, so um, so the difference. Uh, of being data driven or not, I mean that's uh, that's basically what can be the benefits. You know that's what I, I pointed at the end of the of the presentation. You know we are we are capped. You know we are we are certainly capped at some point of the process, but are you by, by our human brain? You know by actually having more 
like a data-driven approach, this is where you can actually bring benefit to, to your business. Yeah. Not sure I understand oh. the question, so but uh, feel free to ask uh, to ask another one. Huh? Yeah, to elaborate, uh, definitely, Robert, you're welcome to elaborate. Uh, but if the question, if the answer was was enough, uh, that that's great. Um, now I have another question. While we wait for possibly uh, other other participants, uh, you mentioned augmented intelligence versus artificial intelligence, and I think this is in in the space of thinking. Whoa, artificial intelligence is like putting a brain in a cage, but making it super, super much more uh, intelligent, which is a dream of humanity, perhaps, or, 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 or maybe a nightmare. But you take a different approach because you are specific to one specific sector. So can, can you explain more about this augmented versus artificial intelligence? That's a good question. Uh, thank you, Leonardo. So, uh, so basically, it's actually mixing the strengths of uh, human intelligence with the artificial intelligence that all together give what we are what we call augmented intelligence. You know, you and we have a common sense that a machine can't can't really have. You know, so we know you know the special specification you know of a certain location. You know, we know that you know we have a certain sense of pragmatism that the machine can't have. You know, so by actually combining both of you know both work together, this is where we can actually bring uh, you know more more efficiency in, uh, in the process. Absolutely. So it's, it's let's combine what the machine does best with what the human does best. Because exactly. basically in the future, machine will be able to replicate all our intricacies in, in thinking. But why wait? Uh, the machine is not able to do it now, but we have humans. We are humans and we can do it. And so we, we get the help from machines for the things that maybe a uh, machine can do better. That's great. Um, now we have two minutes and a half. So another question, uh, please guys, feel free to, to ask. Um, otherwise, um, I think that I would have an, another, um, another question um, or observation. Um, I, I really liked the fact that, that you are, well, okay, let, let's go for, for this question from Jan Matis, Matisic, uh, and then maybe mine. Uh, so what are the typical obstacles when collecting the needed data from customers? Hi, Jan. So, um, yeah, we have different challenges. That's a great question, actually. And this is what, our, what we were just discussing before. So one of the obstacles, for instance, is our several TMS. You know, some of our companies, you, you can see that, you know, grow, uh, grow externally, you know, by our you know, following the you know, MNA process. So generally, we find different TMS provider within one, one company. So that's one of the first obstacles. Second obstacle is we need to transform this data. You know, the data, the idea is to automate the process, you know, so either through API or through a .csv file. The idea is on a daily basis to have the right format of the data in order to actually capture it and to, to, to actually forecast and optimize. So that is the second part of our, of our job. And this is another obstacle for, for us. This is where our data engineering team is actually understanding the data and transforming you know, and building another layer of data that we will use on a daily basis, you know? And then the third obstacle I would like to mention here is maybe the quality of the data, you know? So, and this is why I insist, and uh, that's my strong advice, please ask your, your operations team to make sure that every field is fully filled out and actually the data is clean and can be used uh, uh, right away. So that's, uh, that's a strong advice. And really when we say data is a new goal, that's true, and more and more you will be uh, you will see uh, appearing on the market some uh, of those algorithms, but they all need data. They all need to be fed by uh, by data to uh, to work. Fantastic! Thank you, John. Thank you very much. We are closing now. Uh, in few seconds, we're going to disappear from here. So, uh, thank you to all the people who asked the questions. Thank you. Uh, that uh, uh, John uh, helped you, but if you need to to talk to him, you can reach him at the email that you can see in the in the slide. Um, you can also download the handouts from the handouts tab just on top of the of the chat, and uh, uh, yeah, reach out uh, via via email to John. And uh, well, let, let's see what Transmetrics. Uh, uh, we'll be able to do in the future, and I see a brilliant future for Transmetrics and all the people who are going to work with them. Thank you very Thank much. You. To Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Leonardo. Thank you, John. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Bye.